Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Del, Coach Dell Harris with Team Richmond Basketball. Excited today to have three former alums uh, join us and just share the Division Three experience. Uh, these two, uh, three young men were teammates uh, with Team Richmond in 2015 and now are getting ready to graduate. Time flies and successful careers. And again, we could not be more proud of their accomplishments on and off the court. And so uh, this is one to uh, hear about their experience, but also hopefully to educate. Uh, we have some of the best Division Three programs in the country right here in the state of Virginia and wanted to uh, bring some notoriety to that, but also just talk about some outstanding young men. So uh, excited to have Nick Parks uh, joining us, a, a former Monacan High School chief and graduating from uh, Christopher Newport uh, as a teammate as well. Kutch Ellis, uh, Benedictine Prep, and again, senior here, getting ready to graduate. And then Corey Turner, Amelia Academy, an outstanding career, getting ready to graduate at Randolph-Macon. So, uh, guys, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, I, I'm going to start off here again in, in no specific order, but would love to, to hear from all three of you in your own way. Um, why did you choose? All you guys were very highly touted high school recruits uh, playing AAU at a high level um, could have went division one, division two, II, division three. You had several choices, but why did you choose the specific school for you? And just tell us a little bit about your experience at your school. Uh, we'll start Corey. I'll start with you. There we go. The point guard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I chose division three or just like the specific school uh, based on like who wanted me the most. Um, but then, you know, being, um, highly recruited uh, by a lot of different schools It came down to like the best fit and so the best fit was basically like I made some goals and stuff like what I wanted to get out of my college experience and then basically from there choosing which school uh, got me as close to accomplishing those goals uh, as possible and I kind of had like a long-term vision where okay out of college I want to be able to like have a job because I know basketball isn't gonna last forever so you got to go, okay, well, <clears throat> if I went, try to go to Division Two, Division Three, or Division I, um, that might not have put me in the best position to be able to, you know, further my career in, uh, in, in the work world. And I wanted to be able to get that also internship experience um, and other things besides basketball. So um, Division Three was like the closest thing to that and allowed me to do that and um Randolph Macon, you know, they have, they have great alumni um, and great people in the program that, you know, look out for you and uh, have a lot of job opportunities and connections. So uh, when I went, visited there, I really liked it. It was very close to home. And, um, and then also the coaching staff. Um, the coaching staff was really big on personal development and um, making sure, like, that you're able to become the, the best man as possible. And so I, I really liked that. And um, and so, yeah, that's how, how Division Three and Randolph Macon sold me. That's awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Nick, the shooter, man, we became a defender. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, kind of like Corey was saying, the reason why I chose Christopher Newport in Division Three was kind of just to get a little bit of the actual normal college experience and the basketball all in one. Because when you go D1, it's kind of – that's like your job the whole time you're there. And not that it isn't when you're D3, but you kind of get – to have a little bit more time off and get the education side and the social side of the college experience. And when I was visiting Christopher Newport, just the fam family atmosphere that they had, not just with the players, but with the coaches and the families of the players, everyone was really connected. Like after games, everyone gets together and eat and spend time together. And I really liked that um, aspect of it, that everyone was close together. And yeah, and just the winning culture that CNU had built um, really attracted me because um, Coach K, he'd been there first couple of years building that program up and they'd really established a winning culture there. And that really drew me to the program. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well said. Uh, big fella, cut your experience. Yeah. So actually like right at the end of my high school, I mean, my high school career, I was always D1, D1. I wanted to D1. And um, towards the end of it is when I kind of brought it down like three different schools and one was a D1 and the other one was actually making or Corey goes and um <laughs> and then O C and you. And so when I got down to that point, I honestly I took the basketball out of the decision mm -hmm. and I figured out where I would see myself for four years and where I like 
what what feels right. And every time I went to seeing you, it just it felt right. And that's basically why I chose it. Because I mean, I had it was the coach. I always wanted to play for a good coach, and it, three schools had great coaches. They're all great. Um, all all three had great basketball teams, and so at that point, I was just like. What's the deciding factor? Like, what stands out and what feels more comfortable? And like, I could see myself for four years, and it was definitely seeing you. And Coach K did a great job, like Nick said, of having your basketball life with also being able to have a college life and being able to just like experience like both and not be just so tied up into basketball where you kind of miss out on everything else of just being a college kid. And we kind of get the best of both worlds at that at D at the D three level. So that's why. At the end, it felt D three felt right for me. So that's awesome, guys. That's awesome. Uh, just, just again, well said. And again, we got Corey Turner, Nick, Nick Parks, and Kutch Ellis joining us today. Um, and I make sure I probably should have started off with this. I want to thank Fox Sports Radio ninety six point nine FM thirteen forty AM for doing this, and uh, they're always doing a great job in the area uh, promoting local colleges, high schools, and athletes. So we really appreciate them uh, taking the time to do this. Uh, want to shift a little bit. Just tell us a little bit more about your major, uh, your your major um, at the school, and then um, also kind of two part question here. Just your teammates. Uh, everybody talks about culture and all that, and well, I'm going to get to it later about the success you guys have had. But the teammates, the friendships you've made, the bonds, which will, will last a lifetime. So two part question there. Your major. And then, um, again, those teammates and friends. So um, I'll go right back to you, big fella. You got that, Kutch. Uh, yeah, so my major is uh, business management here at the uh, Luther School of Business. Uh, great program, just great overall school of business. Uh, it's pretty hard to get into and it's, uh, very challenging while you're in it. So it kind of helped. I know Nick is in it as well, so it helped us prepare us for the real world after. But, um, but my teammates, uh, I mean, that's also – I knew guys going like I knew Nick was going. I knew um, I knew Savante. He was a Richmond area guy, so I knew guys that were there. And um, but when I got there, it was just like it was. They just brought it. Just bring you right in. It's like a big family. And there's still guys. I mean, one of my best friends. He graduated a year before I did. He was our point guard, Tyler Femme. I don't know if you know, him, but he lived with me his senior year, and we still talk on the phone for an hour maybe every other week. So like, we, we still connect. Uh, another guy who graduated two years before that, he just got married, uh, invited me to the wedding. Unfortunately, it was during the uh, CAC tournament, so I couldn't make it. But it's just uh, guys I still talk to all the, all the time, brothers I'll have, I know for the rest of my life. So it's just, it's a great culture there. And my, I love my teammates, every single one of them. Another one just got engaged, uh, graduated with me and Nick. So that wedding's probably coming up soon. So it's pretty <laughs> cool. But yeah, it's just, it's a small, it's like, it's just a big family. So it's, it's really nice to see and y'all like it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Corey, how about you, man? Uh, so I'm a, I'm a business finance major. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I just really like that. Uh, Randolph Macon doesn't have a, a, a certain type of business school, but they have um, a lot of opportunities and connections with the internships and stuff like that through um, business majors and all that stuff. So it's kind of similar to like a business school. But um, and so and what, what, tell us, what, weren't you in New York City a little bit? For yeah, internship? yeah, I did an internship. Uh, one of the basketball alumni from Randolph Macon, um, they he holds an internship every year for specifically Randolph Macon students. Uh, sometimes he opens it up to other colleges, but uh, he's the president and um, CEO of Rich Line Group, which is a Berkshire Hathaway company. And so I did a nine week internship uh, out in New York City, um, staying at NYU dorms. And um, that was a great experience. You know, got to got to work out at the gym uh, as well as uh, build relationships with uh, not only people at Richline, but um, other interns from different companies as well. Um, so that was just like an awesome experience. And that's another experience that um, Division Three allowed me to do, because I'm pretty sure, you know, if I went Division One or something like that, then um, we would have had to leave early for workouts and all that stuff. So um, that was great. But uh, teammates wise, uh, Grayson Medulla, who also used to play for Team Richmond, um, yeah. he, he was at Randolph Macon and um, that, that, was, that, that helped a lot. You know, a local guy, we had similar backgrounds. We, I actually knew him since I was nine years old. Uh, he played for a U-turn, I think it was, uh, and then he came over to Team Richmond. Mm -hmm. And so 
uh, knowing him, I went on my visit with him and he just kind of shared his whole experience and, and got to meet a lot of the, the, the teammates that are already there and see their, their relationships. And then they also spoke highly of the alumni and how they, um, they really look out for the players. They really support them. And um, especially after college, like everybody just stay connected, hang out. Um, and so that was really a big um, factor for me. Awesome. Awesome. Nick. Yeah, um, I'm also in the leader school of business as a coach and I'm a finance major and it's a really tough business school to get into and stay in. And I chose finance because I've always been good with numbers and I liked the accounting side, but I didn't want to be one track on accounting. So finance kind of included all of it. So it left many doors open to any career path that I wanted. And um, teammates wise, when I was coming into seeing you. I knew a couple of Richmond guys. We had, they had Tim Daly and Kevin Regenbald on the team. They both went to James River High School. So I knew them from watching them in high school because that's where my sister went to high school. And during the summer, they would hit me up um, in Richmond to go see like the, one of the coaches were seeing the AAU tournament. So that really helped um, kind of draw me in. And everyone at seeing you is really close. It's really a big family, even with players that I haven't played with that came before me. Like everyone always comes back and is really close. And I know Kush and I's senior class is super close and we'll be brothers for life. And I'm sure that everyone that I play with, I'll keep in touch with for a long time. This is awesome, guys. Well, I, I definitely appreciate that. And uh, I've heard a quote that said that uh, coaching you guys as an AAU coach, again, not about me at all, but I heard a quote that says, uh, the reward in coaching always comes later. And this is a reward, man, just to see you guys four years, pick the right school, your family's proud of you and so well-spoken and articulate, man. This is, uh, this is awesome, man, and, and helping uh, some young people. Um, and also, um, I want to get into now Final Four, Sweet 16, Top 25, winning conference championships, playing in conference championship games. And in the culture, you know, it's called a D3 experience and nothing wrong with D2, D1, great players there. But in the world of college basketball that we live in with people transferring and again, that word culture and all that. And, you know, me and my brief playing career, I transferred to three different schools chasing the division one dream. But I never can say that I played in a sweet 16 final four uh, conference championships, regular season champ, all that. So uh, just talk about the winning part of it. Uh, championship rings. You guys are in the rafters, the history books. Um, please share with that. And I'll, I'll start with Nick this time with just whatever you want to say about the, the, that experience. Yeah, it was luckily I was um, able to experience a lot of that seeing you throughout my four years. And I don't, I don't care like what level D1, D2, D3, like if you win a championship or go to a Sweet 16 or Final Four, it pretty much all feels the same. And Division three and say they do a great job of setting you up. You still get to travel long distances like you would with Division one, play in big arenas. We got to play in an arena that a G League team plays for in Fort Wayne for the Final Four. So yeah, just I mean, winning is winning any level, and it feels great. So no matter what level, D one or D three. Uh, next, uh, Cutch, good. I'll let you. We'll go that way. We'll finish with Corey. Yeah, so uh, I mean, at the D three level, you're not. That's not D one. You're not. You're not playing to get, try and get to the NBA. Most of them. So um, you're you're playing to make. You're making memories with people that you're playing with, and to be able to go to four straight conference championships, win two of them, go to four NCAA tournament appearances, be able to fly, go to the Final Four. I mean, all that just all that winning culture made us have more memories to make with one another and stuff that we'll never forget spending time with each other in the airport or in Boston and Fort Wayne. So it's just, I mean, the winning part is awesome, but it helped us make memories with some brothers that we'll never forget have for the rest of our lives. So that's honestly the best part about winning for me, at least is just to be able to have more time, play more games with the guys that you've been there with for four years. So that's awesome. Yep. Cool. Yeah, it, yeah, I would I would agree with that. Um, going to a school with a winning culture culture, it's like they're expecting you to win, and it's it's it's, it's pressure, but it's not really pressure. But um, it, it's good to have other people who've already done it and been through it before that you can talk to and be like, hey, how did y'all do this? How did y'all do that? And then be able to uh, implement that 
uh, with a group of guys, like they said, and um, make memories with them. Uh, that's awesome. And then you also have that that motivation, you know, getting rings and cutting down nets um, is is something that uh, any athlete should be dreaming of, especially if you if you if you're big on winning. And so um, just being able to do that, like they said, at any level um, is big. And a lot of people tend to uh, downplay Division Three, um, but until you get there. Well, I, I would say that until, until you get there, you, you shouldn't judge it at all just because uh, the guys at the, in Division III, um, they, they can beat Division One teams, you know what I mean? So um, I, I, I just think that, that, that's, a, that that's awesome right there, just the winning yeah. coach. Well, no, I, I tell people all the time in, in the state of Virginia, you know, we have great Division One programs, and a lot of those guys recruit on a national level. And then Division II, uh, you know, uh, very two very good historical black colleges here. And then we have uh, a couple others. But the Division II, you know, in Pennsylvania, they have a whole Division II league. In West Virginia, they have a whole Division II league. So then you wonder why our D3 is so good. It's because there's a lack of Division IIs. And the Division Ones kind of recruit on a national level a little bit. They do take local kids. But basically, it's Division I guys who are playing Division Three and won all the things that you guys are talking about. And um, but finishing up, like I, I would love to hear being in the top 25. I know all your coaches, well, assistants and head coaches, great programs. Is there pressure there being a being a top 10 program? I mean, did you look at the rankings? Did your coach talk about it? I would just like to hear about that because I mean, a lot of guys don't get to say that I'm a top 25 team, you know, during the regular season. So uh, I'll, I'll go back to you, Corey, on that. <laughs> Yeah, um, we definitely take a look at it. We we kind of measure ourselves with that, and our, our coach is always saying, "Hey, you mean you, you're ranked in the top 25? Um, you're you're going to get team's best shot every single night. Um, there's no night that you're going to be able to take off because everybody wants to be like, "Hey, we beat the the top team. We beat we beat a team that's ranked and stuff like that." So um, just knowing that um, that you're going to get everybody's best shot, uh, that 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 was huge. Good, 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 good. Cut. To be honest, I probably checked it one time, and that was going into my freshman year, and we were number two in the nation preseason. So that was like, I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then the seniors basically sent me straight and was like, we don't care about that here, seeing you. And then it just it built off that. And basically, I honestly, I'd rather not be in the top 25 because we like proving people wrong. And like we like having the doubters and stuff. So I honestly pay no attention to the rankings like throughout my college career. But I didn't I didn't care if we were in the top 25. I didn't care if we were out of it because as long as we were in the NCAA tournament, we're every team is getting our best shot at them. So I like that. Nick. Yeah, kind of like Coach was saying, our coaches didn't really harp on the rankings too much. And that just trickled down to us. We didn't really look at it that much. And Coach K is always preaching that um, he always says pressure is a privilege and mm. having that pressure as a top 25 team should make you better. And you should embrace that knowing that you're going to get the best shot from every team you play, just because if a lower team plays you and you're in the top 25, that's kind of like their championship game. and Every team's going to get up for playing you. So he always preached that pressure is a privilege and just embrace it. And that should make you want to work harder. I like that. I like that. Uh, Co Coach K, you're listening. I am copywriting that. Dell Harris will be using that in the locker room this year. I like that. Um, well, hey, uh, finishing up, guys, I always like to uh, 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 you guys offer some advice, anything uh, to, to, to the young people um, and then tell us what the future plans are. I know uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so it's great to come with you here with this live interview, but uh, we'd love to hear what your future plans are. Um, with graduation and then um, just any advice for uh, the youngsters out there, high school, middle school, whatever you want to share. And um, I'll, 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 I'll go to I'll, whoever wants to start first with that. How about that? I'll leave it open. Yep. Nick, you got it. Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, well, future plans, I'll be working at um, Town Bank come June 1st here in Richmond. So I'll be in a program that they do. So I'll be working in the branches here in Richmond and also going down to their headquarters in Suffolk for training on the, credit analysis loan side congratulations and yeah. parents are happy parents are happy <laughs> so yeah and just some advice for um kids trying to decide where they want to go to school just like Corey was saying in the beginning go where you feel wanted and that you feel comfortable going to you don't want to go somewhere that you're not sure like where you stand with the coaching staff or like what kind of impact you're going to make i would just say go where you feel wanted feel wanted, accepted, and know where you know you're going to make an impact. 
Uh, so for me, uh, starting June 10th, I'll be an investment analyst at Virginia Retirement System, uh, downtown Richmond. And then also I will be uh, going to get my master's in finance at Virginia Commonwealth University starting in August, or hopefully starting in August. So, um, but then, yeah, some advice, I would say just like develop a plan and, and have goals and stuff. Don't just, don't just go with the flow. Uh, because that's when you make you tend to make a lot of bad decisions. So just have a plan and know like what you want long term and then basically make those goals and um, do the things you need to do leading up to that in order to get you to be able to accomplish those goals. And um, and that, that should help a lot with a uh, school decision and just figuring out uh, because college is an investment, especially at the division two, division three level. Um, if you're not investing money, then you're investing time. So uh, you don't want to waste those four years so um, or even one year. So just make the most of it and, and start by making a plan. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. And um, so I'm starting this launch program at Sunbelt Rentals. It's a nine month program. It's supposed to start June 1st, but it's gotten postponed from there just because of the pandemic right now. But it's basically where I'll learn every aspect of the company. So and then um, some advice for the young guys, um, just make sure you just if you really truly love a sport, put the work in. You don't want to have any regrets. Like I'm already sitting here now, like I'm done with basketball and I wish I could go back and do it all over again. I just, <laughs> I, miss, I already miss it so much, but uh, just cherish the moment you have and just don't, don't just think you like, like it's, I know if it's D3, I know if you're not, your mindset's not at D3 right now, don't turn it away. Any coach that's talk wants to talk to you, just take that as cherish that that someone wants you at their program and just, Cause you never know. Like I, when I was in high school, I didn't think I was going to go D3. I, I wanted to go D1 and I'm so glad I went D3. So I would just cherish any, any opportunity you have, just take full advantage of it and see where it goes. So That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, before I let you go again, this is not about team Richmond at all. This is about, you know, you guys just informing and educating and just hearing your experience. But uh, any team Richard memories? Y'all remember the trip to Louisville Nationals? We drove to Louisville. Uh, one of the best AAU games. Great respect for, for Team Loaded, but I think we played Team Loaded at Randolph-Macon. Uh, I think they had uh, Mama D at Virginia. They had Nick Sherrod, a stud team. I think that was like a overtime or a last second game. Uh, but so many great memories uh, along that ride. Um, and, you know, played with Georgie Pacheco, Will Miller, um, you know, Coach Scoop, Coach Roy, Coach Bird, any, anything uh, from back in that day, or Coach Harris just yelling at you, Coach Harris coming out in the neon blue pants, you know? So uh, anything from Team Richmond, uh, those memories or that season you remember or anything you want to share? Uh, just that, like you, you put it on uh, that, that Randolph Macon game. That was the probably the craziest game we played all summer, and we had them beat, and it, it was awesome. And we it messed up at the end. It got a nice little tip in at the end. But that is that was one of the funnest games of the summer. Just being able to play in that atmosphere with all those coaches and all those big time recruits. It was it was an awesome game. Yeah. No, that again, great respect for them. That was an awesome game. It was you know twenty or thirty high major coaches there. N nobody was there to see us, but it was uh, it was cool to be competing. Yeah. Uh, you guys. Yeah, I was, I was going to say the same thing, but I'll go to a different uh, a different memory. Uh, we played Squires at Boo Williams, I think it was. We yeah. went to, I think, three or four overtimes and ended up winning the game. Uh, that was just awesome, you know, two, two competitive teams uh, fighting and just going through that with, with my teammates and stuff. You know, Nick and Kutch was there. So um, that was just awesome and just something I'll never forget. That, that was a great game. Before the game, you get Corey Turner out there with the jump rope, getting ready, getting loose. I like it. Yeah, yeah. That was a battle. Great great respect for Squires. That that was a great battle. Yep. Uh, Nick, anything? Yeah, I, I was actually going to say those two games, the Squires game and then the Loaded game. Those two games were insane games. And I know the Loaded game was the, kind of the first experience I've gotten with, like, tons of college coaches at a game. And that, that atmosphere was – really cool to be a part of it and just that the whole um nationals trip in a whole was really cool just to be in that big um convention center with all the courts and that was a really fun experience uh traveling with the, all the guys yeah i think nick's being a little humble because then he have what nine did three he, points did he have like nine three three points points in one game. It's, are you still hot is it still <laughs> just, as a whole that trip was great <laughs> yeah yeah and especially the game where i hit nine <laughs> 
Well, good. Well, uh, guys, man, I really appreciate this from the bottom of my heart, man. Uh, hopefully, man, we'll do it again later on. But uh, we're so very proud of you for what you're doing on and off the court. Um, so happy that you chose the right experience because a lot of people don't do that. So uh, keep up the good work. Best of luck. Please stay safe in the pandemic. Uh, all love to your families. Fox Sports Radio, 96.9, uh, 1340 AM. Thank you so much. And uh, again, I, I hope one young fella can get something out of this or maybe a parent can get something out of this that'll help their son in the journey. So uh, we appreciate you. Stay healthy and uh, great things to come for the next chapter. So thank you so much.